Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So now we will come back uh, to the next lecture. In our earlier lecture, I have presented uh, some Eulerian as well as Lagrangian approach. Today, I will, uh, in the coming in this, uh, in the four lecture, I will describe, or in the three lecture, I will describe the method which is called semi Lagrangian method. So, we had before only the Lagrangian, and now we come to the semi Lagrangian. What does it mean? Consider again linear advection equation. del rho by del t plus a del rho by del x maybe with some source sum rho is equal to 0. So before we had no rho now we are giving rho we will see how what is the effect of giving the rho in in fixed domain a v with Initial condition with an initial with an initial condition rho zero x is equal to um, rho zero x and maybe boundary condition as periodic. So what does it periodic means? So I have the fixed domain left and right. The value on the on the left boundary A is equal to value on the right boundary. So that is uh, the periodic boundary condition. And now so let me keep this as a 35.1 So express thirty five point one in characteristics form or or again Lagrangian form. This is an Eulerian formulation. As so again, you know all the things in earlier lecture. This is equal to a d rho by by dt is equal to minus rho. So this is thirty five point two. Yeah. Now try to express this into the discrete form. So. In the time and space, consider x of n is equal to x of tn or tn where tn is equal to 0, 1, 2. This is a time, this discrete time and rho of n 
x is a row of tn of x and uh, consider a discrete consider the or discretize a b with size delta x is equal to b minus a by n for a given number of grid points as so define x of i is equal to a plus i minus 1 delta x so i runs from 1 to n plus 1 yeah where x1 is the boundary a and x n plus 1 is boundary n plus 1 so rho i of n is equal to nothing else rho of tn x i of n yeah so at the time level n now express 3.5 into the discrete form everything is not different from our lagrangian mystery method express 335.2 in discrete form dx i by dt is equal to a d rho i by rho i by dt so minus rho i so here we use so this is a 35.3 so in equation Thirty-five point two or thirty-five point three, we consider initial value as x i tilde. and a row i of tilde so we don't so we don't know exactly what initial value means yeah so for example so integrating integrating 35.3 so what do we get here x i of n plus 1 is equal to so this is our initial value. I told you that our initial value is x i tilde plus delta t times a. And the second one is rho i of n plus 1 is rho i of n tilde minus delta t times rho i of tilde n yeah now this is our initial value we don't know what the initial value is now we have to determine the initial value so how to find to find initial value x i tilde of characteristics No, this is the question now just take it backwards so x i tilde we can find this this is nothing else x i of n plus 1 minus delta t times a yeah this is our this gives us where the characteristic start the characteristic start at the point x i tilde let us write into the 
figure. So I have my this is time level Tn. This is time level T. So this is n plus one. This is time level Tn. I have the grid points. So it may not be regular. We don't need because we are always in the mesh free. So it doesn't need necessarily. They are not necessarily uh, regularly distributed. So these are. So this is the x position here. So we have some t here. And then what do we get if you look the layers? So our if you we move, then our new position would be something like that. Yeah. So if this may be x of i at time level n, and this is x i at time level n plus one. And then at x i time level n, we have also rho i n. So here we should get also rho i n plus one this time level. Yeah. And now how to get x i tilde? Suppose if a is positive, then if a is positive means so you follow the backward characteristics. You come back here. So you are coming back. So if A is positive, if you look the backward characteristics, yeah. So if A is positive, if A positive, so this is our x i tilde of n. So now we found our initial position of the characteristics. And now if we find the initial position of the characteristics here, so we have to compute rho i tilde of n. So here we should compute rho i tilde of n. Yeah. So once we know rho i tilde of n here, then we plug this value here rho i tilde of n, and then we get rho i n plus 1. Yeah. Now, how to get rho i tilde of n? We know already. So we have done a lot of interpolation. So with the uh, moving least square method. Now you sit at the point x i, look its neighbor inside the edge here, left and right, and then you do the moving least square approximation. Do the Taylor expansion, minimize the error. Then finally, you get the interpolated value rho i tilde n at x i. So because at this time level we know all rho i of n. So if we know rho i of, of n in all these grid points, then of course we can interpolate the this value at any arbitrary point. So now I think so once we have the integration we put it here and then we do the uh, the time uh, evolution. So what do we see here? So our we just it is it looks like uh, you remember the particle reconstruction method. Yeah, in particle reconstruction method also we move, and then in the old position we have interpolate the value back. But here that time we had just put the old position. But here we do not know where the characteristics falls. If it falls exactly here, if it falls exactly here in the particle projection method. We are just putting exactly back here. But here, so we are not sure whether it is exactly coming from if A is a variable. Yeah, we we later we will have a different A. Then we just follow the backward characteristics, find the foot of characteristics. So now, then after knowing all these things, then we have the solution. So what does it mean now? So let me write it bit. This I give 35. Point four. This I denote thirty-five point five. So we know from thirty-five point five the initial. 
poison x i tilde n yeah so we have to rho i tilde n is equal to rho of x i tilde n eight x i tilde n so it can be obtained from the MLS method considering the neighbor values of rho i tilde n yeah never values of x i tilde n so the neighbors values a time level n is known yeah so this all are the values are known here because we know all if this is for example n is equal to zero then we have the initial value already here and then if we know the initial value and then we just approximate with the moment least square and then go and then plug in here then for go for n is equal to one so then what we have if it for to find the t2 we know already t1 and then we just proceed yeah we go on so after computing rho i till n we put it in equation 35.4 35.4 then we have updated value rho i n plus 1 and then we repeat until final time final time so now look at this equation so one advantage of this semi implicit method is that so this is the explicit formulation here we have done explicitly both the characteristics also we have solved explicitly and then the equation also we have solved explicitly but one advantage is, but we have with the explicit scheme, we have restriction on the CFL condition. But when we use the implicit, so here the advantage of that we can use the implicit scheme. Yeah. So implicit scheme means that. So whether you integrate that explicitly, that is one. Now we can do the implicit. So the advantage. of semi lagrangian i call it as sl is that the implementation of implicit time integration is easier 
So, what is the implicit time integration? Yeah. Now, what is implicit time integration? So, we call people call mostly most uh, widely used. Name is backward difference formula. So it is called BDF. Yeah. So the first order. is denoted by BDF1, second order BDF2. So what is BDF1 and BDF2? So let consider ODE, yeah? time dependent ODE dy by dt is equal to f of t of y. So this I call as 35.6 with initial condition value y of 0 yeah because uh, y is a function of t here so now i keep it here so the time discrete discrete values in in time y of n is y of again tn tn is equal to 0 1 up to maximum number of time step and now bdf 1 of 35.6 this is just the implicit euler before we had the explicit euler so we will have the implicit Euler. So it means y n minus y n minus 1 divided by delta t is equal to f of t n y of y of t n or other way around. So let me write if I write it either this form or this form it doesn't matter so this is equal to f of n yeah or if you want to write n plus 1 here so i will have n then here i will have n plus 1 here so it is implicit yeah so i solve it implicitly if i consider this is equal to here tn and y of tn so that was f of n, but now we have f n plus 1. So it means that this implies y n plus 1 is equal to y of n plus delta t times f n plus 1. So this is the implicit form because this f n, this if it is f n, so everything explicitly. But if it is f n plus 1, then anyway y f is a function of y n. So then we will have to bring it here. So this we denote it as 35.7 point, point here. And now BDF2, this is a 
y n plus one is equal to y n plus delta t. Now it is different, so it is where well, this is the VDF one. So VDF two is four by three y n minus one by three of y n minus one plus two by three of delta t f t n plus one y n plus one where y of one is obtained from BDF one. So what does it mean? So if I want to take first step, if y n is equal to zero, so n is equal to zero, I have y is equal to one. So y n plus one is y one is four by three y zero minus 1 by 3 y minus 1. So I do not have the value of minus 1. So if I compute the first time step of BDF2, then in that case I use just the BDF1, only the first time step. Because I do not have, I have only the y of 0, not y of minus 1. Yeah. Therefore, here in order to find, because y It n is equal to one, n is equal to zero. We have y of one is y of four by three, y of zero minus one by three, y of minus one plus two by three of this, yeah, this condition. So here we do not have. y of minus 1. So this was the reason why then once we know the first step then there is no problem. Then if n is equal to 1 we have y2 is 4 by 3 y1 y which we get from here minus 1 by 3 y0 we already get here plus 2 by 3 these values are given. Therefore in this case the, uh, what do we have that we consider the even if it is BDF two only first time step we consider BDF one, and then we do this uh, for the for the time step. So this is the second order approximation in time. This is the first order approximation, but both are implicit. So implicit means that you do not have any restriction on. So no restriction on CFL condition because, so we do it everything implicitly. So it is uh, on uh, unconditionally stable solution for the ordinary differential equation solver. So I think uh, in the next lecture, we just try to do Im implement BDF1 and BDF2 for this solving 35.3. Okay. So now we stop it now then just wait for the next lecture. Just now coming back to solving using this uh, BDF1 and BDF2 we come back how to solve this uh, 35.3. Okay, thank you.